Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We're going to continue, inshallah ta'ala, with the class of the tafsir, explanation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Explanation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we know, concerning the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to time era, they divided into two periods, the Meccan era and the Medina era. Likewise, when it comes to the ulum, the science of the Quran, the suwar, the chapters of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of two types, Makkiya or Madaniya, Meccan or Medina surah. So far, alhamdulillah, we've reached so far in the seerah, the Medina era. And likewise, when it comes to the Quran, we've reached those suwar al madaniya those suwar that were revealed in Medina. Is that a correct statement? Incorrect statement. We've reached those suwar that were revealed after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because suwar al madaniya is whatever was revealed after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even if it was outside Medina, even if it was in Mecca, it's madaniya. So we reach the first of the suwar al madaniya And the suwar we reach, the first to be revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina is the longest surah in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise contained in it is the longest verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa a'adhamu ayah, the greatest verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is surah al-Baqarah. Despite the length of this surah, we said is divided into four main categories. In our previous lessons, four main branches. And we said from these four main branches, we could take 47 durus or 47 dars, 47 lessons. And so far we've covered two lessons, I believe, because these lessons are divided according to groups of ayat. So the first thing we covered was from ayah number 79 all the way to 109, those groups of ayat which was revealed concerning who? Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, which began with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَوَيِّلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Woe unto those who write down the book with their own hands and then claim it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We covered this majmu'ah and we looked at the traits and the attributes of the people of the book and some of those traits and attributes that are present in some of the ummah today that follow the ways of the Jews and the Christians, the Ahlul Kitab. After that, we look at the Majmu al Ayat, the group of Ayat that preceded, was a precursor to Tahweel al Qibla, the changing of the direction of the Qibla, which began with the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs al Mashriq wal Maghrib, the East and the West. On to reach the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayaqulu sufaha That the foolish ones, Sayaqulu, they will soon say. And from these ayat, we took from it benefits and also rules and regulations. And why is it now, especially now, we've reached this ayat al-madaniya or suwar al-madaniya, we're looking at ahkam, rules and regulations. Most of the rules and regulations were revealed where? In Medina. So whatever surah will come across from the surah al madaniya you're going to find a lot of rules and regulations. A lot of rules and regulations. And a lot of aqeedah issues still will come in there as well. So, sayaqulu sufaha, from the benefits we took from it, just as a quick revision, inshallah ta'ala, just these two words, sayaqulu sufaha. Who could remember the benefits we took from this? That the foolish one will soon say. Sorry? Benefits, naam. Barakallahu feek. Ilmullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bima sayakun. In that which is going to occur. Because yeah, it hasn't occurred yet. But Allah ta'ala sayakulu. They are going to say. Sayakulu sufaha'u. Min al nas ma wallahum an qiblatihim lati kanu alayha. The second benefit is sufaha. From the word of sufaha. What benefit did we take from this? La. Naam, that foolishness or the foolish one is anybody that goes against the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or opposes the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safihun 
whether it's to do with creed, the aqidah to tawheed, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهَ None goes against the millah, the way of Ibrahim, except for the one that's what? Safiha nafsa, the one that is foolish. So these are the benefits we took from this. Now for the other ayahs, in this ayatul madaniya, there's a lot of rules and regulations. And that's why the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, the one they'll consider a fiqih, a knowledge, a knowledgeable person, or scholar in fiqh, if he's memorized, baqarah, and nisa wa ali imran. Why? Because there's a lot of rules and regulation in this ayat. So what we're going to move on today, bi ta'ala, is tahwil al-qibla, the changing of the qibla from Baytul Maqdis to Al-Ka'bah or to Masjid Al-Haram. As we know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raised in an environment that in terms of people and affiliation to religion, there were two types of people. There was the mushrikun, the polytheist, who a womb, the majority of their religion, if not all of it in some cases, had no heavenly basis, no revelations behind a lot of their actions. And they had the Ahlul Kitab, who in origin, their deen was the deen of what? Monotheism. Their deen originally was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had heavenly revealed books. And that's why they called Ahlul Kitab, until they distorted it and corrupted it. So he had the Mushrikeen and he had the Ahlul Kitab as an environment. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he didn't receive a shara, legis legislation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned previously, what would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? And what did he like to do? To do things in conformity to Ahlul Kitab. Because their religion had a basis. And that basis is what? Wahi, heaven revealed books. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if no sharia came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would do things in conformity to who? To the Ahlul Kitab. And one of the issues he did in conformity to the Ahlul Kitab was to face Baytul Maqdis. Because when we say the people of the book, the majority of Ahlul Kitab in the Arabian Peninsula, if not nearly all were what? Yahud, the Jews. They were the ones that were there. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he found them praying and facing Baytul Maqdis. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the initial stage in Sahaba, they faced Baytul Maqdis, which they call Bilad sham which is today known as Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine. They'll face that general direction. And during the first period, this was not an issue. Because as we know, when it comes to the Syria, there are two eras. There's the Meccan era and the Medinan era, right? And this was not an issue in Mecca. And why was it not an issue in Mecca? Because of the nature of the Kaaba. Because the Kaaba is like this. So, no matter what angle you're praying from, you could face anywhere. The nature of the Kaaba. So, it was not an issue. So, the Prophet will pray facing the Kaaba anyway. But between a Ruknul Yamani and uh, between Ruknul Yamani, what's between Ruknul Yamani? Between Ruknul Yamani and another angle, subhanAllah. La, not Hajar al Aswad. I remember later on, but Al Muhim, he will face the Kaaba. And between him and Baytul Maqdis, we what? The Kaaba. So, anyway, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was still facing the Kaaba. So, it was not an issue in Mecca. He was still praying towards the what? The Kaaba. So, it was not an issue. However, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made Hijra, Barakallahu Fiqh, Hajar al Aswad, wa Rukn al Yamani, Jazakallah Khairan. Between Hajar al Aswad and Rukn al Yamani. So when he made Hijrah to Medina, it became an issue. Because Medina was between Mecca and Bilad al-Sham. It was in the middle. So if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he faced Baytul Maqdis, his back would be towards the where? Towards the Kaaba. And if he faced the Kaaba, his back would be towards where? Baytul Maqdis. Walakin, in doing accordance to the way of the people of the book, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they will face Baytul Maqdis. Until the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ That we have seen taqallub, the turning of your face towards the sama. And we're going to give you a qibla tardaha that you are pleased with. فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ So turn your face towards the direction of Masjid Al-Haram. Until this time, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was praying towards Baytul Maqdis. 
When this verse was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam At this point They started to pray towards Bait uh, towards the har uh, To Masjid Al-Haram In fact It was said Even prior to this The first person To actually pray Towards Masjid Al-Haram From the Muslims From the Sahaba Who uh, Man Umar Not Umar when was the first Sahabi an, to pray towards Masjid al Haram? Even before this ayah was revealed. The first Sahabi an, to pray towards Masjid al Haram was Barar ibn Ma'roor al Khazraji. Barar ibn Ma'zur al Khazraji. This Sahabi an, was from al Khazraj, from one of the major tribes of Medina. And he, Sayyid Qawmihi, was a leader of his people. And he had given the bay'ah al-aqaba, the first bay'ah, because there was two bay'ah to the Prophet ﷺ for the people of Medina. Bay'ah al-aqaba, was the first one bay'ah al-aqaba? Al-ula, the first bay'ah, pledge. And the second, pledge. So on the after the first pledge, they were going back for the second pledge to the Prophet ﷺ. For bay'ah al-aqaba al-thaniya. And what's the difference between al-aqaba, al-ula, the first pledge and the second pledge? What's the first pledge? What's the difference? I'll give you a clue. What was the nickname of the first pledge? Pledge of the women. And why was it called the Pledge of the Women? Because there was no fighting. With Athania, they went and they gave pledge to the Prophet ﷺ that they would fight and they would defend the deen. So on the second pledge, going back to Mecca, he was leading his people. He's the Imam of his people. And the time of Salah came. So now they're heading towards where? Mecca. So now, they were facing where? Mecca, heading in the direction of Mecca. The time of Salah came, and he didn't feel comfortable to pray and turn his back towards the Kaaba. So he said, I do not, to his people, I do not feel comfortable with this. I want to face the Kaaba, and my back towards where? Baytul Maqdis. So the people of Bara, Ibn Ma'roor al Khazraji, when he did this, they said to him, SubhanAllah, look at the word of Sahaba when it comes to the Sunnah. They said to him, Wallahi ma balaghana anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli illa ila sham. It's not reached us except that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prayed except towards a sham, towards Baytul Maqdis. Yes? Wa ma nurida nukhalifahu. And we don't want to go against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, in that case, he didn't say, I'm your leader, I'm the seed of your people. He said, in that case, do as you will. But as for me, I'm going to face the Kaaba. As for me, I'm going to face the Kaaba. And this shows us there's no obedience to the creation in disobedience to what the Creator. And whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is legislated is from who? The Creator, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's why Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah shahadatun wahid to bear witness to the oneness of Allah and the risala of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because whatever is from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so he prayed towards the, the Kaaba upon reaching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they got to Mecca Bara Ibn Ma'roor he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these people went to him as well and they said he prayed towards the Kaaba while we pray towards Baytul Maqdis so he feared himself that his action might go against the action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so when we reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Ya Nabi Allah O Messenger O Prophet of Allah Inni kharajtu fi safari hadha I left this journey wa qad hadani Allahu lil Islam Allah guided me to Islam for ra'aytu an la aj'al hadhihi albaniya I did not find it appropriate or befitting to make my back be turned towards this building, meaning the Kaaba. So I prayed and I faced the Kaaba and my back was towards Baytu al Maqdis. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, He said to him, Laqad kunta ala qiblatin law sabarta alayha. That your action in reality of praying towards the Kaaba, Laqad kunta ala qibla. You was facing the correct qibla. If only you just be a bit patient. Meaning that it's going to come. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered him. Ordered him to still pray towards where? Baytul Maqdis. 
And the ulama, they take from this that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kana yastashiru. He was, had a feeling or a need for the Qibla to be changed towards where? The Kaaba. So from that point on, Bara ibn Ma'roor radiallahu ta'ala an, he continued to pray towards Baytul Maqdis. Then he went back to Medina. Upon reaching Medina, it was said, Bara ibn Ma'roor radiallahu an, marada marada al maut He became ill, terminally ill. Illness of death. Faqala li ahlihi. He said to his family, qabla an yamut, before he passed away, he said to them, that turned me towards the direction of the Qibla. And he passed away in the direction of the Qibla. So they say, Bara ibn Ma'roor radiallahu an al-Khazraji was the first to face the Qibla hayyan wa mayyitan, alive and dead. He was the first ever person, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. A month after his death, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached Medina, just a month after his death. As for the changing of the Qibla, it happened in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 17 or 18 months, some say 16 months after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he reached al Medina. So they continued for between 16 to 18 months facing Baytul Maqdis. As for the exact time it happened, they said it happened at the time of Salatul Wusta. And this is one of the things that we covered as well in the class of Tafsir, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hafizu ala salawat wa salat al wusta. Be mindful of the prayers, especially the middle prayer. So if the time of the changing of the qibla was the time of salat al wusta, at what salah did the time of the what salah did the time or the change of the qibla happen? In which salah? Salat al Asr. If you say Salat al-Asr, naam, you're correct. Jayid. Or Salat al-Asr. Or huh? Salat al-Wusta. We did this in the Tafsir. When we did the Tafsir of Surah al-Asr. That some of the ulama, they say, Al-Asr is the time of the Salat al-Asr. The greatness of Asr. Allah Ta'ala said, be, be mindful of it. And we said, there's other than Salat al-Asr in the interpretation of the ulama. Which Salah? They only chose two, Fajr. Imma al-Asr, Imma al-Fajr. Jayid? And that's why there are two narrations. That, the changing of the Qibla, it happened at the time of Fajr. And in another narration, it happened at the time of what? The time of Asr. Jayid? And it was said it was happened in the beginning of Jumada, Al Ula, Aw Nisu Sha'aban. One of the two. Now, when the changing of the Qibla happened in the time of the Prophet, there's a narration that Fajr, another narration, it happened at the time of when? Asr. Concerning the change of the Qibla in a hadith in Bukhari, it was said when the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down, Qad nara taqalluba wajhika fi sama. That immediately the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He faced the direction of Masjid Al-Haram Masjid Al-Haram And a person prayed Rajulun Salla Ma'a Rasulillah He prayed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam After they finished the Salatu Marra Ala Qawmin Min Al-Ansar He passed a group of people from the Ansar Now in Medina at that time There were two main Masjid One of the outskirts of Medina Masjid Quba and Masjid al-Nabawi because the population of Medina was very small so the Masjid he went past was not the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor was it Masjid al-Qubah if it was Quba it would have been mentioned so it must be Masjid of a Qawm of a people very small Masjid and we see why now later on why it would be a smaller Masjid so he passed the Masjid وَهُوَ yashhad, and he's saying yashhad, meaning saying Ashhadu he said, Ashhadu, Sallaytu Ma'a Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I bear witness that I prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Qibla has been changed towards Baytul or Masjid Al Haram, towards the Kaaba. Jayid, Wadu in Salah. Tayyib, Tawajjahu Nahwal Kaaba. And he said, Immediately they turned towards the Kaaba. In another narration, he said, This person had prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for Marra Rajul. Min Bani Salama. He passed the people from Bani Salama. Wahum Ruku'a fi salatil fajr. And they were in Ruku'a in salatul fajr. 
وَقَدْ صَلُّوا رَكَعًا فَنَادَى They already prayed one raka'ah already. They were in the second raka'ah. فَنَادَى إِنَّ الْقِبْلَةَ قَدْ حُوِّلَتْ فَمَالُكَ مَا هُمْ نَحْوَ الْقِبْلَةَ He pronounced or he shouted out the qibla as changed towards the Kaaba. And they prayed one raka'ah already. They were in the second raka'ah. And in ruku' they turned and faced the Kaaba. In ruku' One of the reasons we know this is a masjid of a qawm of a people is this. A masjid like this, for example, because if the direction of the Qibla was slightly airing to the east or the west, it's possible. I could lean east or I could lean west. But Mecca from Medina is in what direction? Towards the south, opposite direction completely. So if that was to happen here now and the masjid was to be full, I would have to turn and I'm the Imam. I have to go through every single soft to get to the end and you turn after that. But he managed to pass the Sof or the Sufuf and turn and they turned with him. Because the Masjid of a Qawm, of a people. Not Quba and not Masjid and Nabawi. So immediately, in Ruku' they turned and they faced the Qibla. As soon as the Qibla was changed from Baytul Maqdis to Masjid Al Haram. As for the interpretation of the verse itself and the benefits and the rules and regulations, that this verse contains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad nara. Qad, in Arabic, is, is a, a form of surety. That indeed we see nara. Now nara is a present tense. Jayid. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah saw him. But in this ayah, Allah ta'ala said, we see. They say, هَذَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى مَاذَا What is the, what does this proof to say to somebody, I see, even though you saw. يَدُلُّ عَلَى التِّكْرَارِ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeatedly, repeatedly kept looking towards the sky. Repeatedly. So in the Arabic language, if somebody does something repeatedly, even if he was in the past, use the present tense. So it's a repeated, often done action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدَ نَرَى Indeed we see. And that's why Uthameen rahimullah azza wa jal said, Isharatan ila tikrar al-fi'l Because of the constant action from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَتَكَرَّرَتَ الرُّؤْيَةَ So due to his constant action, تَكَرَّرَتْ الرُّؤْيَةَ Allah Ta'ala consistently looked at him. Jay, we indeed, we've seen you many a times. And the ru'ya here, the sighting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is a physical sighting. Because ru'ya is of two types. Ru'ya tul basar, to see something with your eyes, wa ru'ya tul ilm, and to see something with knowledge. Because in English I could say, do you see him? Meaning, do you physically see him with your eyes? Or do you see what I am saying? Meaning, do you understand, do you have knowledge of what I'm saying? And who could give me an example of the Quran of ru'ya al ilm? Ru'ya, seeing with knowledge. Alam tara. كَيْفَ فَعَلَ رَبُّكَ بِأَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ Have you not seen? Is this ru'yatul basar? Ru'yatul ilm. Jayid? But this ru'ya here is ru'yatul maadha? Ru'yatul basar. And what is the significance of knowing this ru'yatul basar? We said the purpose of the seerah is to take rules, regulations, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, the Prophet as Qudwa, as husbands, as family men, as businessmen, and most importantly when it comes to the issue of aqeedah. Very, very important. The basis of everything, your fiqh, your usul of fiqh, jayid, the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at-tafsir, your lugha, the basis of everything is aqeedah, your creed and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the aqeedah is corrupted, it affects everything else. And that's why when we did the tafsir of the previous ayat about tahrif, the aqeedah that some people may had already, it made them twist the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lughawiyan. People's aqeedah affects their fiqh. And that's why the ulama, even in books of aqeedah, they say, they mention the issue of mas ala khufayn, wiping over the socks. Even if it's a fiqh issue, they put it in books of aqeedah. Why? Because the Shia don't wipe over their socks. Also, al aqeedah wa tawheed, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimullahu azza wa jal, in his book concerning Tawheed, he called a fiqhul akbar, the greatest fiqh. So there's no benefit because the purpose of fiqh is how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Prophet said, Man yuridillahu bi khayran yufaqihu fi deen. 
whoever Allah Ta'ala wishes good for, He gives him fiqh of the religion. They say the fiqh of religion cons it, it covers not just fiqh as a science, but the whole religion, but especially a tawheed. Because if your aqidah is busted, it will affect your manhaj likewise. And there's no point learning fiqh how to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla aqidah. You may fall in issues that may make your action null and void. So we learn from the Sirah likewise, aqidah. So what's the first thing this proof that Allah Ta'ala says, قَدْ نَارَ إِثْبَاتْ رُؤْيَةُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى It affirms that Allah Ta'ala yara, Allah sees. Because when we looked at tahrif, there are those that negate the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or give other interpretations. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِي شَيْءٍ It doesn't say as we see, but إثبات الرؤية. And this is رؤية البصر, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He sees. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبْ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ We see تَقَلُّبْ وَجْهِكْ فِي السَّمَاءِ The turning of your face towards a sama. What does this also prove in Aqeedah? Naam. Jazakallah khair. Ahsan Allahu ilayk ya Abu Rayhana. Naam. Ulu illahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulu. The highness or the loftiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he didn't say قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبْ وَجَكَ إِلَى الْيَمِينَ وَإِلَى الشَّمَاءَ وَإِلَى الشَّرْقَ وَإِلَى الْغَرْبِ And that's when أهل بدعة When he came لغوياً, linguistically To prove or try to prove that Allah Ta'ala is not Above his throne in the heavens, above the seven heavens, above his throne And it was coming from an aspect of language about many shubuhat The person asked them Tayyib, you've brought all this proven evidence But I have only one question for you what about this necessity or this darura that is in our hearts that every time we make a dua where does our heart go to us towards the heaven and this is fitra in everyone that when they pray the light they look towards the sky so they say the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of the tafsir qad nara that we see your turn of face to the qibla they say this was dua because the qibla of dua is the heavens the qibla of the dua is the heavens so this proves Uluwullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Uluwullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala being the heavens, is, has, despite the fact some people, subhanAllah, they're gonna straighten this, and he has consequences, aqeedah, he has one of the strongest evidences. All types of evidence. Because in Islam, evidence is what? Quran, Sunnah, what else? Quran, Sunnah, Ijma'ah, Issues of Aqeedah, you can't use Qiyas. So Quran, Sunnah, Ijma', Consensus, what else? What is one thing in Aqeedah that people use to prove points of Aqeedah? Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was debating with his people, what did he say to them? These are people that had no knowledge of Aqeedah. He asked them simple question. Do they see? Do they speak? So by fitrah, the natural fitrah of a person, the a sign of a perfection or completeness of a human being is to see and speak, not to be deaf or dumb. So if you can speak and you can see, your creator definitely is more perfect than you. Jayid. So another evidence is fitrah. That is salima. A natural inclination that's still in place. And the last is what? Aqliyan. Is what? Your aql, intellect. And this fitrah, even if it was a Fir'aun. Because Fir'aun, what did he say to Musa? What did he say? Not to Musa, to Hamam. What did he say to him? Ibn li sarhan la'alli attali ila man ila ilahi Musa. Build for me a scaffold or tower so I could go and see the Lord of Musa. So by fitrah, the fourth evidence. And the last thing is what? Aql, your intellect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proven by all these five things. Rarely would you find that one particular mas'ala proven by these five things. Also, when we go to the sunnah, the sunnah of three times. What are the three types of sunnah? Sunnah qawliyah, sunnah on statements, fi'liyah, action and what? Taqreer, uh, which is the approval, the silent approval of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That something done in front of him and he kept silent. It's a sunnah. Likewise, the ulu Allah subhanahu wa taala is proven by the three types of sunnah.
too many texts, too many evidences. The physical, because Uluwullah Ta'ala is of two types. It's physical highness and also what? Uluwul Ma'ana. That in meaning, in spiritual, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has the most highest and the loftiest attributes and characteristics. As Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى And to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala belongs the highest examples or similitudes. Amma al-Dalil al-Aqli, we've mentioned already, the intellectual evidence is that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, if we are what we are, that anna rabb la buddha an yakun akma min al marbub the one that cultivated and created has to be better than the created jayid so ulullah ta'ala allah ta'ala's highness in terms of names and his attributes is something by aql likewise so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qad nara taqallub wajhika ila as sama we see the turn of your face towards as sama jayid then allah ta'ala says فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ So therefore turn your face towards Al-Masjid Al-Haram Al-Masjid Al-Haram Why is it called Masjid Al-Haram? They say it's called Masjid Al-Haram Because of what? لِحُرْمَتِهِ Due to the sanctity of it The Haram Meaning there's many things Unlike any other places It's impermissible to do that so لِحُرُمَتِهِ Due to the sanctity it's called Masjid Al-Haram or Al-Haram Masjid Al-Haram طيب وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ Wherever you are فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَةً Wherever you are Meaning the east and the west Wherever you are on the face of the earth Face the That direction شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدُ الْحَرَام And this is a proof That wherever you are You have to face the direction of what? The Masjid Al-Haram meaning the, uh, the Haram, not the Kaaba necessarily. You're going to face the general direction of where? Saudi Arabia or the Haram. That general direction, wherever you're on the face of the earth. But if you within the, the bound, or you're within the Masjid, you can't say, well, I'm in the Haram anyway. You have to face the where? The Kaaba. But wherever you are, the direction of what? Masjid Al-Haram. So this is a khitab, this is a direction to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرًا وَالْخِطَابْ هُنَا لِلْأُمَّةِ And this khitab here, وُجُوهَكُمْ, your faces, is to the rest of the ummah, generally. To the rest of the ummah, generally. And generally speaking, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is addressed, the rest of the ummah, is also addressed except with proof and evidences so addressed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we mentioned in the previous classes of surah al-sharh of three types what are the three types either specifically to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to the rest of the ummah or what it can either mean this or that we don't know so an example of an ayah that is addressing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically. We'll give me an example. Naam? Naam. I just mentioned it now. Alam nashrah laka sadra. But when it comes to the physical sharh of the sadr of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're talking physical. This is specifically addressing who? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Other than the physical sharh, this applies to all believers. That Allah Ta'ala expands for them their chest. And that's why the ulama, they say, the people of the sunnah. This surah applies to them. That when you follow the sunnah, Allah Ta'ala in shirahu sadr. He expands for you your chest. وَوَضَعْنَ عَنْكَ وِزْرَكْ And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, it lifts from you your burden, your, your sins. That weighs you down. And then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala goes on to say, وَرَفَعْنَ لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ We raise for you your mentioning. Our intention is to please Allah Azza wa Jal. But if a person sought for his name to be raised and mentioned, follow the sunnah. Allah Ta'ala, even after your death, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, your name will always be raised and mentioned. If you look at the ulama of the sunnah, compared to ulama of bid'ah, the scholars of bid'ah, that in their time they're famous, they're known, but after they die, khalas. So this is an example of that which addresses the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically. As for the second type, which is to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah called the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the address was also to the rest of the ummah is, is which type? Is what ayah? 
Surah Al-Talaq Ya ayuhal Nabi Iza talaqtumun nisa O Messenger Allah Ta'ala called him But how do we know it's for the rest of the Ummah? Because Allah said Iza talaqtum Not Iza talaqta When you all divorce your women Not when you divorce your women Jayid And the third type Is the one Neither this Or That And the ulama They have different ways In addressing They say look Even though is addressed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to the rest of the Ummah because he's there, he's the leader of the Ummah or is addressed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the rest of the Ummah should follow him in that so it's just a difference of wording but at the end of the day anything in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is addressed with it applies to the Ummah unless there's a specific evidence to say it's only for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the last thing we take from just one ruling which is أَنَّ الْوَاجِبْ إِتِّجَاهِ إِلَى jihha. لا إصابة عين الكعبة. That what which is sought from us is to face the angle of Masjid al-Haram, not necessarily to face the what, the Kaaba. So, for example, if the Qibla is like this, it's just an approximation. If you move a little bit like this or a little bit like that, you're still in the general direction of where Masjid al-Haram. It will be an issue, like in one Masjid in England, they built the Masjid, done it up. I don't know how you do this because when people move into houses, one of the first things you check even in the West, is to check what? Or when you're building houses, the direction of what? The Qibla. And why do you do this when you move into a house or you're building a house? The toilet, to so make sure it's not facing towards the direction of the what? The Kaaba. Because although there's some scholars that say it's permissible if there's a wall or barrier between you and the Kaaba, that you can either face the Qibla or turn towards the Qibla or you're back towards the Qibla if you're relieving yourself, the most Sahih opinion of Allah Ta'ala A'lam is not permissible. And Uthameen rahimahullah azza wa jal He actually went on to differentiate between urinating and defecating That for him is not permissible So he said if someone moves into a house like that or builds a house What some people do They'll sit in a way whereby they're not facing it But he said no what you should really do is break it all down Because you may do that But those that come after you Do you guarantee they're also going to do that Turning like this, turn like that And how much is it going to cost you anyway? To just knock down the toilet seat and turn it in the other direction. So usually when people build in houses or move into a house, they, you know the direction of Qibla, you try to know. But this is a masjid now. So they built the masjid, very nice masjid. And uh, I think it was that time, one of the people from here, he wasn't here at this time. One of the du'at, he went to England to give a lecture. And uh, at that time, these new watches had come out, the Casio watches. I'm talking about 20 years ago, you know those Qibla watches, the Casio one, that you could tell the direction of Qibla. And the brothers were all excited about it. That was the best of technology at that time. Or like those watches with the calculators in it. You know, you seen those Casio watches? So when the Qibla watch came out, it's like, subhanAllah, it's like the iPhone 20, basically. So, and that's not even out yet. <laughs> so it's like the brothers were playing with it in the masjid. Everywhere they go, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. So they went to this masjid, it was in Southall, and they went and they thought, man, this watch is busted. Because it was not in the direction of the, of the, of the Qibla. It wasn't just like this, it wasn't just like it was a 90, 180 degrees out. 180 degrees. So they went to other messages, they tested it, tested it, they realized, no, it's the message. So they went to the committee of the message, they said, look, we know. But what happened, we had gone so far in the building and they kept it a secret, they didn't tell anybody that we couldn't turn back. The person, in fact, was, uh, that was asked the question when he was there was Bilal Phillips. So he said, no. If it's just a little bit like this, little bit like that, it's okay. But like this, it's like this way and then went that way. Not it wonder, it was 90 degrees, I'm sorry, it was at 90 degrees. The message, it was at 90 degrees. At 90 degrees. So they had to break it down again and then build it again properly. Now, but what he saw from me is a general facing of the, of the, of Masjid al-Haram. Next week, bi Ta'ala, we'll look at other ahkam, Rules and regulations or points of aqeedah we we'll get from this ayah, inshallah. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha, and tistaghfirullah. Any questions, inshallah?